Astronaut takes a space shower. Uh, um, <laughs> this is a bit problematic, isn't it? A series of photos of Nina Vazanova taking a shower in zero G. Uh, have been circulated in several newspapers. Um, that's not okay. <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think they thought about how this uh, event is worded. That's um, <laughs> were her fellow cosmonauts just perving on her in the sh space shower? That's that's weird. That's a bit weird. It is a bit weird, right? Oh, there we go. There's the there's the Russian probe. It's not just me, right? That is a bit weird. Okay. I think it is weird. Still, our space station is done, so we can reuse one of our shuttles because we're not actually using either of them for anything, I think, at the moment. Um, yeah, reuse shuttle. Here we go. What's the difference between these ones? One of them has a different upgrade, right? Uh, can I see the difference without selecting? Let's have a look. Bandage ski has the launch escape system. Okay. And then needle ski has... Oh, can we change it? We can change it on the shuttle. Oh, okay. That doesn't matter. That's the minus 10% build cost. But we're launching people on this. Um, so, yeah. Let's use Bandage Ski. Which is the launch escape system. 67% uh, launch reliability isn't great, really. Uh, but we can do training to increase that. But, yeah. Anything that has crew on it, launch escape system, really. It's not worth, not worth risking it. Okay. Cool. We have to use these shuttles a lot for those, well, A, for the shuttles to pay for themselves, but also for the landing strip to pay for itself. Because that costs quite a bit, and it reduced the cost of the, and the time of the fitting, so, and you're refitting the shuttles, so, yeah. Mission training bonus reduced by, ah, god damn it. God dang it. Yeah, let's assign three crew members. Are these guys, are these guys on Mir at the moment? I think they are. Uh, each task with plus one power. Hell yeah. 10% science reward. Hell yeah. Launch reliability. I think we'll just do training for that. We'll get support reward. Confirm. Yeah, this is a, a crewed vehicle with three crew members. Reliability training is going to have to be. Still, it's going to take a while for that training to properly kick in. That's up to 88%. That's still not ideal. I think we'll do it in June. Yeah, 92% is the, the minimum I want to go for. Got to be in the 90s, at least, when you've got crew on board. Even though, of course, the crew will be fine, but... Yeah. Let's do it! I don't want to blow up a shuttle if I can help it. <laughs> they are expensive as hell, and I want them to pay for themselves by saving me money. I have to keep building them, because they're really expensive to build on the first time. New joint mission available on the moon. We can do a joint moon landing with the US. Hmm. That's not a bad idea, actually. Although I do like being antagonistic towards them. It gives us extra funding. <laughs> By just blowing raspberries at the US delegates across the UN. All the Russian people watching at home are like, Yeah! Give it to them! And they increase the number of voluntary tax. Don't know. Is that a thing? I don't know. Can you just choose to give more money to the government? I don't think anyone would, but... You can make voluntary contributions. I guess you can just buy bonds, can't you? That works. Right, come on, Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce or Beyonce ski. I'm gonna call it Beyonce ski because otherwise it's awkward. Okay, so th that was high enough for an unmanned mission. I should say uncrewed. Uh, I've got a space environment, space debris module at the moment. And there's a lot of emphasis on using gender neutral language, and our um, lecturer has actually got the IADC, the International um, Space Debris Committee, to change all of their documentation, everything to be gender neutral. Um, I need to get into the habit of using uncrewed, especially going into a career in, in space flight. Um, you, yeah, you need to really get into the habit of saying uncrewed rather than unmanned. Um, you know, it's a little thing, but it, it means a lot to people. And a little bit of effort to make a lot of people happy. I don't get why you wouldn't do it. Um, training. What are we going to do here? I think this is quite a big science reward, right? A huge science reward. So science training, yeah. Ooh, God, we haven't got a good launch date for this for a while. But 5% sight, hmm. Mm. But to wait an extra 10 months to launch it. I think in that 10 months, we could launch a lot of missions which would make up for that science. Yeah, 
I'm not willing to wait that long. We'll do a 5% increase in size. Not great, but... Yeah, it's not worth waiting an extra 10 months to launch it. I think in that time, we could have launched, you know, 10 single-month missions. Well, not really. You've got to build them, but <laughs> you get what I mean. We can make it up. Salute crew return. Aha. Okay, they weren't on me. They were on, they were on Salute. Why is everyone talking about Nina taking a shower? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is this news? Why is Nina taking a shower? Like viral news somehow I just, oh. Oh, who knows Saturn Orbiter, 77 months goodness me this is gonna take a while i don't know <laughs> all the news is like wow nina took a shower in space look at all these <laughs> saucy photos <laughs> oh maybe it'd be less problematic if it was like alexi or something but even then weird even if you are in space it's weird stop watching people in the shower <laughs> it's not okay Right, let's launch this thing. We built this thing pretty fast, dang it. I'm still not used to seeing the Russian flag on these things. Maybe I never will. It's weird how I always end up playing as the Soviets or the Communists, whatever game series it's in. Kerbal Space Program, any, any time I have an excuse to play as a communist state it's always like yeah i can start making jokes about seizing the memes of production Ooh, very nice plus one data on the trans saturn injection burn i assume it wouldn't be called trans saturn there must be a, a name for it maybe it is trans saturn right let's do this it's pretty much exactly what we've done before it's minus two each turn but we have four commands every turn so let me see uh here we go five thrust so yeah uh i don't know why is it it's like 16 but yeah you have four commands it comes in batches of five so you got like yeah you have to you have to get to 20 thrust unless you get and uh, like a bonus reward on one of them, I guess. Regardless, though, we have to do that four times on the final turn. So we're going to need eight data and four nav extra. So yeah, a lot of a lot of data and nav. That's basically all this is. And of course, of course, <laughs> the only thing that doesn't cost two power is comms. Um, we can generate a lot of data, not data, navigation with comms though. So that makes things a little easier. And we can use nav and comms to get data. So... Four turns, though, actually. This is my... Hmm. No, this will be fine. This will be fine. I've got to keep an eye on the time, actually, because I've got the Beyond Kerbal episode 23 premiere later. It's just, like, after, gosh, like, a year and a half of being on hiatus. So, people are very excited, and I, I definitely want to sit in on the premiere of that. But yeah. It goes back to what I was talking about earlier, really, in that... You know, um, I think that's more than enough comms for us there. That wasn't what I was talking about earlier, but <laughs> um, I just feel like I'm spinning a lot of plates, if that makes any sense. Uh, what do we need extra? Oh, I need extra comms, okay. So, yeah, I've got all these projects on the go, yeah, Mars Horizon, Beyond Kerbal. I don't have time to, to be doing more than one of them on a regular basis, you know, so I, I'm making a concerted effort to end these series in a satisfying way for everyone so then i can just focus on one thing and do that regularly well maybe one maybe two things you know i think one regular thing uh or is this that which will be for all couple kind at least until ksb2 comes out um and then i can be doing you know as and when i have time one-off videos you know more of those and Maybe try and increase the reach of the channel and appeal to a new audience. As I said, I've got some exciting plans. But I've just got all this stuff. I just want to reduce the number of projects I have ongoing. I've got so many different things I'm juggling and it stops me from doing any anything new. Because any free time I get, I'm trying to barely keep up with the stuff I've already started. Mainly stuff I started during lockdowns, to be honest, when uh, I had a lot of time. What do we need here? We need... We've got enough now. We just need a bit more data. Uh, 
Is that enough data? Uh, we need eight extra, so we need 16. There we go, that's enough. And then, in case anything goes wrong, I think we're sorted then. Yeah, perfect. Ooh, bit of extra nav. Beautiful! And then one, two, three, four. Bonus reward. Thank you very much, Bish Bash Bosh. Done. He's still got it, everyone. He's still got it. The probe clearly hasn't, but... <laughs> still getting bonus rewards left and right. Apparently the Soviet Union slash Russia, I guess, is the hardest nation to play as. And we're playing on medium difficulty, I guess. I've seen people on my Discord manage to get, as I said, finish the game as the Soviets uh, while they're still the Soviets, which is crazy, like finishing the game by 1991. I don't know what difficulty they were playing on, but still, it is it is remarkably impressive. Do we have any mission slots? No, okay, we have, we have filled them all up. Cool. Space rocketry documentary. It proved an unexpected success. A retired engineer from your agency has described the volatile nature of sounding rockets. They kept blowing up. Yep, that's pretty much accurate. And none of our early rockets ever blew up with a person on board. Oh, I guess that would be that would be public knowledge now, since the Soviet Union has just collapsed and all that stuff would probably be declassified. <laughs> Everyone's like, who's this Valentina Tereshkova? It's like, uh. <laughs> uh Imagine proving the lost cosmonauts conspiracy theory true. Bloody hell. In reality, it's just because Americans couldn't accept that they weren't. <laughs> well, you know. That they weren't the best at space travel and they didn't do things better than everyone else and yada yada. But really, a lot of... Yeah, I mean, you know, lives were seen as considerably more expendable and there was a lot more pressure to achieve propaganda wins in the Soviet Union, but... They did own up to when they did lose cosmonauts. Most of their manned space flights and stuff were, were fairly widely publicized. Um, at least after the fact or leading up to them. They were always, usually for big anniversaries or something, at least after Vostok 1. They were always, they sort of realized the, the value of, of propaganda wins. Because they didn't expect the US to get quite so upset about uh, Sputnik, which I just find endlessly entertaining. Budget review. We haven't done that much. Okay, gosh, we're into 1993. I would love to land on Mars before like 2010. I think that would be great if we can do that. Still, we just got to sort of twiddle our thumbs for a little bit until we're launching uh, our next space station. And then we'll almost have enough to begin working on that third and final module of Mir, which we refuse to turn into the International Space Station because somehow Russia has the money to do that in this universe. Don't ask me how. Does mean we get all the science ourselves, though. <laughs> oh, good conditions. Up to 99%. Perfect. Not going to get better than that. Because really, we don't need to worry so much about money. Like, that was the biggest concern in the early space program. I think we even almost overcompensated for it. We just did, did nothing but support missions and do missions for funding and do things that would reduce costs. So we're in a very good place now. All we need to do is just spam science, 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 science and just race for Mars as fast as we can. And I think we're on track to do that. The Chinese are still pretty much neck and neck with us, but... I think provided nothing goes catastrophically wrong, i.e. Uh, a shuttle blows up and kills everyone on board... <laughs> I think we'll be fine. And there it is in all its glory. Gosh, how many how many of these stations have we launched now? I haven't been keeping track because, of course, the mission name is named after the shuttle. Oh, look at that. It's, it's got a Russian flag on it now. Uh, that's an image that I uh, never thought I'd see. Space shuttle with the Russian flag on it. That's cool. Right. Drift has to equal zero. God, we've got narrow requirements. Is it going to change? Okay, I think it's fine. It's not going to change every turn. That makes things a little easier. And we have extra crew too. Uh, so we have three crew members, so we can do a few of these. So all the crew things push it to the left though, which isn't ideal. Um, 
And really, all we need is nav. And I just need to look at what's the best way of producing nav. It's this one. So three to the left, two to the right. We just keep doing that. Yeah, I think so. Six turns. Eight nav per turn. Yeah. This might work. I probably should plan this out like from the start because I think our margins for error here are very, very small. But yeah, I think turning comms and or data into nav is, is the best way of doing this. But not wasting a turn to produce comms at all is also <laughs> equally valid, I think. Cool, we'll do that. That uses most of our power, though. Still, we're getting a lot of bonus rewards here, so it's making things a little easier. Reduced by three. Yeah, we need to resist that. Okay. We're at 30. We need 20 more to get that bonus reward. So, uh, we're running out of power, and I want to save that for resisting things if we need to. Uh, we need to correct this drift as well. We've got plenty of turns to do this, but I think doing that to 42. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're fine. This is fine. I'm used to uh, <laughs> using prototype value and not having the extra crew members and the like, so uh, I think it's the next stage, which is the really difficult one, though this is the one we've always been fine on. And the next stage is when it starts it starts varying the drift as well, uh, which makes things exceedingly complicated. Okay, we just need eight nav, so we can do that relatively easily. So push that to the left. Uh, I guess if we recharge twice and then just do that. Next turn, then we even finish the turn early, so that's fine. Okay, cool. Yep, we're fine. We're fine. Can I just accept that? Yeah, we only did that to correct the drift. So that's okay. Okay. Boom. Shakalaka. Done. Uh, we could actually take that one on the chin, but we'll just resist it anyway. Okay, sorted. Right. Let's deploy our systems. Okay, this actually isn't too bad. This is all right. Yeah, I don't think we got a uh, modifier which made this way more difficult. So, yeah, but oh god. The fact that you don't know how much it's going <laughs> to change by is so irritating. Yeah, the crew ones really have good ratios of resources. So having the extra crew member is very, very nice. I haven't looked at the tech tree, but it'd be cool if they have the TKS spacecraft or the VA capsule. Because those were used... Never with crew on board, but at least I believe one was attached to Salyut 7. Almost as an extra module. It was like a crewed spacecraft that could be launched on Proton. I didn't look in the tech tree to see if that's in there somewhere. I don't think it is. I think Soyuz is the last craft we got. And it's irritating that Soyuz is basically the weight of the entire L3 complex. So you can't really use it for LEO unless you launch LEO missions on an N1, which would be ridiculous. Um... Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice if there was a dedicated LEO little sort of late game crewed spacecraft. Maybe there is. I'll have a little look into some of the later missions. Um, but I don't know. I don't think there is, which is a shame. Some of the concept stuff would have been interesting if it made it in. But obviously they had like five nations to make tech trees for. So uh, maybe that wasn't such an option. But it, it would be maybe more interesting if they they had fewer agencies maybe flesh out the tech trees a little bit more with some of the more concept stuff. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's just the inner space nerd in me wanting a little bit more from the game. But yeah, right. Let's get some, uh, get some data. Increase the number of resources we've got. Cool. Just making sure I'm increasing all of the resources at once rather than focusing on them one time. Uh, <laughs> one at a time, I should say. Because that's how we lost a space station in the past, so. Not a great idea. 
Let's make sure we have the base objectives first, and then you go for the bonus objectives. Uh, we need a lot more nav. There's no great way of producing that, actually, so let's keep an eye on that. Um, that was how we screwed up before, because there was no great command for producing lots of navigation. And then I was focusing too hard on the other ones, and then realized I couldn't produce enough to even hit the base objective <laughs> before time ran out. Whoopsie daisy. Still, made for a, a cool thumbnail. <laughs> Salute down. Everyone's like, oh my god, Salute 7 being recreated. That is a great film, by the way. If you haven't seen Salute 7, it is a really, really good film. You should go watch it. It's great. Uh, that almost gives us enough. Yeah, let's do that. Try not to use too much power. That puts us in a good place. It's not very historically accurate. Uh, <laughs> considering most people don't know the story of Salute 7 anyway. I mean, a, a lot of it... A lot of the most impressive stuff is accurate. Like, they did actually dock with a spinning space station. Not even interstellar style. Like, it wasn't rotating about its docking port. You know, it was yawing uncontrollably. They had to... Rendezvous at one, <laughs> rendezvous with the damn thing, um, whilst translating around it. It was amazing, um, but that was pretty much where the problem stopped. Uh, the film is a little bit over dramatized, but it's still an amazing film, even if it takes some liberties with the truth. Right, we just need. That's it, isn't it? Oh, we need to correct the drift as well. Okay, that's uh, gonna be a little harder. <laughs> Aha! That fixes it. Perfect. Done. This is <laughs> way more data than we need. Oh, we're on EVA. And cool! Nailed it. These space station missions are so lucrative, and just the fact that we can do them in one month and launch them on a shuttle, they're just basically the perfect missions for generating huge amounts of science um, on a relatively low budget and relatively quickly. I mean, they produce comparable amounts of science to the deep space missions. Obviously, they're not milestones, but as request missions go, they're perfect. A massive thank you to my patrons and donators for their generous support, and an extra special thank you to the amazing stake, Olaf Hammerhand, Madzor, Peter Lushtinets, Delta V, Axel Jensen, Dennis Klomp, Lady Lagzalot, Simone67, Scott Milligan, Harambe, Nicholas Popkus, Waither, Jagnath, Weir, Dreister, Jesse Smith, Lightning Gamer, Elmac, and Nobody Special.